Welcome to my lecture series, Analytical Interpretations, Insights and Inspirations. This month, I would like to share one of the greatest pieces of music, Bach's Chacons in D minor. I will share to you one amazing element in this Chacon of Bach. That is the display of changing numerous patterns and colors. And to illustrate, I will bring in my lecture here, The Art of a Kaleidoscope. The intertwining patterns and colors in a kaleidoscope resembles the kind of polyphony that happens in this Chacon. This is a kaleidoscope, a tool that utilizes optical illusions. Notice here the beautiful changing patterns and colors. These changes are always symmetrical and seamless, but at times can be surprising, drastic, and dramatic. To me, this tool is magical. Bach's Chacon has this particular unique quality in which patterns and colors grow, coming in and fading out, and here I am going to show you a few examples. First, notice here the blue color still small. And now in the music, this is like the demi semiquavers that are just appearing in this passage. Then the blue color grows. Now in the music, how the demi semiquavers are growing. Now they are in both hands, moving upward in a parallel motion. And finally here we see the burst of the blue color dominating the scene. Now let's see how the outburst of the demi semiquavers that take place in Chacon. It covers a wide and longer range. The benefit of seeing this shakon in such this way is that all variations will come and go seamlessly, as I believe that is how Bach intended. Notice here, the green color is starting to grow, and you may correctly assume that soon green will replace the dispersing and fading blue. Here comes the new motif and color in the music. The green color is expanding now, and so did the low octaves from semiquavers to quavers roaming down below. And this series of changing patterns and colors continue throughout the entire Chacon. This is a different kind of polyphony such as the one that is commonly associated with a fugue. The polyphony here is commonly known as the compound melody. In the example here, you have the remnant of the blue color, while the green color starts to grow and dominate. This earlier slide will provide a clear example. I have shown earlier that the blue color is a newborn. Previous color, red, are still dominating. Now you may clearly see the polyphony of the red and blue colors in a compound melody. This is the kind of polyphony that takes place throughout this shakon. Look at the night sky, to the stars, to the vast universe. It is indeed a giant kaleidoscope. Our universe is expanding. Galaxies are moving outward, away from the centers of this universe. Even though we are just dust in this endless universe, our lives are also like a kaleidoscope, a display of changing patterns and colors. Things are moving in closer and closer, then they disappear. People come to life, born with a loud cry, grow, give birth, bring other lives to this existence, and at the end vanish in a silent farewell. 
Bach was a devout Christian. He wrote his music as an expression of faith, and I believe this way, particularly to the Chacon. The Chacon is the last movement or the fifth movement of his solo violin partita number two. The Chacon is the same length as the other four movements combined. Observing to its proportion, its magnitude, there must be something that had so profoundly inspired Bach. Was Bach perhaps in the mood of flashing back his past? How his life was filled with one event to another? Some events were cruel, like losing a brother and a sister in his childhood. And at the age of nine, Bach had become an orphan. His mother first, and soon afterward, his father unexpectedly died. In 1720, around the time of the compositions of the Chacon, Bach's first wife, Maria Barbara, died unexpectedly, and Bach was on a two-month journey out of town that when he returned, his wife had been buried. Very famous violinist Joshua Bell had said that Chacon is not just one of the greatest pieces of music ever written, but one of the greatest achievements of any man in history. It is a spiritually powerful piece. Emotionally powerful, structurally perfect. Johannes Brahms, in a letter to Clara Schumann in June 1877, said about the Chacon, On one staff, for a small instrument, the man writes a whole world of the deepest thoughts and most profound feelings. Let us take a look at one more example of how following this shakun is like following the changing colors and patterns of a kaleidoscope. This is the original theme with a descending bass line. Here is the outline of the melodic line. New line is appearing beneath the melody. Imagine a new color is emerging in a kaleidoscope. Now that new line is doubled, appearing in octave. Imagine that new color in the kaleidoscope is growing bolder. The original theme disappears. Imagine one color disappears, leaving the new color alone. Imagine the pattern is expanding from one octave apart becomes to act a part. It is difficult to count the total number of the variations here in this account because most of the time the changes are very sublime. Seeing the variations in this chacon, like the changing colors and patterns in a kaleidoscope, may help a performer to seamlessly flow from one variation to another. It is like the seasons. One season flows seamlessly to another, whether the seasons under the sun or the seasons of life. And to me, this is my greatest enjoyment in performing this chacon, like magically experiencing the journey of life through music.